the know, I'm Ashley Jenkins. And I'm Gus Sorolla. We are rounding the corner into the final stretch of 2016, which unfortunately means that in addition to some of the best, most awesome, worst anticipated games of the year, we're also treated to a sadder part of the industry, which is developers losing their jobs. Reports have surfaced this week that multiple first party Sony studios have been hit with layoffs just in time for Tokyo Game Show. What timing? Congratulations, everyone. We made it to GGS now. Please leave. The affected studios in question are Sony London and Sony San Diego, continuing the streak of bad news that PlayStation's been having lately since the PlayStation meeting. When you combine that with the closure of Sony's Evolution Studios from earlier this year, plus recent delays, it's not painting a great picture for Sony's first party development. The first round of layoffs, or restructuring as Sony calls it, happened with Sony London, the studio currently responsible for a great deal of Sony's VR efforts, including the Getaway London heist for PSVR. Following the wrap up of some of their first projects, Sony London will now be getting restructured. No word on just how many people will be affected by the um restructuring, but Sony indicated that they would be pretty substantial, Ouch. which never bodes well. In fact, the layoffs are going to be so extensive, they'll even be reaching high ranking personnel. Restructuring. Restructuring. Sony yes. also wanted to be sure that everyone knows this doesn't mean they're backing off their new Bay VR. Uh, it's their new bay, Gus. I'm not reading that. Uh, <laughs> but rather, it's just the typical stuff you'd see once any major project is finished. Look, they're saying, we still love VR, guys. We just wanted to save a few dollars and maybe not develop quite as much stuff. According to a statement sent from Sony, regular reviews take place throughout SIE Worldwide Studios, ensuring that the resources that we have in such a competitive landscape deliver on our strategic objectives in the best way possible. Let me translate that for you. We'll make more money if we don't have to pay you guys between projects. Fortunately for those affected, Sony says they're also going to help former employees find new jobs. That's very nice of them, I guess. Following yesterday's restructures at Sony London, Polygon reported that similar woes have befallen Sony San Diego, with about 40 to 50 people total losing their jobs. Sony San Diego is a studio which works on titles like MLB The Show, Drawn to Death, God of War creator David Jaffe's unreleased arena shooter, and the free-to-play Kill Strain. It sounds like basically everybody but the MLB The Show team saw cuts yesterday, with everyone from Kill Strain's team terminated, as well as an entire team for an unannounced project. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, Sony has confirmed that Kill Strain isn't dead, okay, despite not having any developers, that's just code for please keep playing the game, and that Drawn to Death has not been affected either. So in spite of losing all the developers, the games are doing just fine. Uh, when asked for comments, Sony basically gave the exact same response they gave after announcing the London layoffs, complete with buzzwords about competitive landscapes and restructuring and innovative products. Like unemployment checks. Uh, this news comes just a few months after the reports of other bad breaks for Sony's first party studios. Back in March, the company not only laid off employees, then shut down all of Evolution Studios, the creators of racing games like Drive Club and Motor Storm. So now you've got major layoffs, studio closures, and delays on other first party Sony titles like Gran Turismo Sport and The Last Guardian. Fortunately, that last one is only a couple of weeks. Like a month and a half, six it's, weeks maybe. It's not that bad, but it's a delay. Uh, so things are not sounding super, super awesome if you're a Sony first party studio right now. Uh, and to be clear, we're talking about first party studios here. That's studios that are wholly owned by Sony to develop games for PlayStation. As for what kind of implications these layoffs have, there are a couple of possibilities. Part of it is just the nature of the industry as we're heading into the final quarter of the year. Companies are completing projects and getting ready to ship games that in some cases are meant to account for their main source of revenue. And if they want to keep making more games, they have to try to remain as profitable as possible. So they not only have to sell a lot of copies, they also have to spend less back at home, uh, especially between releases. And unfortunately, cutting employees once you've finished a project is one of the easiest ways to achieve the latter. It's a regrettable part of the industry that many are unfortunately used to at this point. It sucks, but as a creative industry, a lot of the developers are just like, oh yeah, knew this was coming. Well, but the that other- doesn't make it better. It just, it's, it's sad, it's, 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 but it's a reality. Yeah. But the other part of it is that things are getting progressively tough out there for first party studios. And not just for Sony, because Microsoft is feeling the pain too. Microsoft saw some similar problems earlier this year as well, with closures and layoffs hitting Lionhead Studios, Press Play, and Project Spark. Beyond that, both console makers are seeing fewer breakout hits for exclusive titles this generation as well. Obviously, there are exceptions to both sides. There are games that do very, very well. No Man's Sky and Uncharted 4 have both sold very strongly for PlayStation, for instance, regardless of what you think about No Man's Sky so itself. Yeah, it's no sold very well. We're calling that a breakout hit? Okay. We're in terms of sales, yes. <laughs> uh, but the exceptions are just that. 
that, and usually it's the exception that proves the rule, as they say. And even those exceptions are getting to be fewer and further between. In general, it's tougher than ever to be a first party studio. Development costs are getting so high for modern games that it means they have to sell way more in order to keep the studio afloat, which is much harder if you're staying exclusive to a single platform. That's one reason why there are fewer true exclusive these days and why most third party games are platform agnostic. Even some of the second party studios have started to ditch their exclusive deals on both sides. Microsoft is reportedly losing Alan Wake and Quantum Break developer Remedy to multi-platform gaming in their next project, and Sony's partnership with Until Dawn developer Supermassive Games is coming to an end as well. So that just leaves first party titles. Sony and Microsoft are willing to invest in certain studios to keep them afloat even if they're not 100% profitable because they perceive long-term value in having these studios produce more exclusives in the years to come. But there's a balance there, and if the scales tip too far in one direction, it means a lot of first parties out there don't survive for very long. Unfortunately. Unless you're rare, uh, because those guys are on like their eighth live or something. I guess we'll see how Sea of Thieves does. I know I'm way less excited about Sea of Thieves after the C3, where we learned absolutely nothing more about it. Than I got we to play before. it. And? It was fun. I got drunk and I got on a boat and sank another boat. All and right. then I played the game. Uh, so, don't, <laughs> so don't worry, PlayStation fans, this trend doesn't necessarily mean that all Sony first party titles are doomed. It just means that all first party titles have a much harder chance at not being doomed across the board, which probably is not very comforting. No, either. no, that's good news to hear, right? It's just uh, work harder, work longer, crunch time. It's forever. All the time. Uh, so what do you guys think of Sony's first party studios getting hit with delays, layoffs, and closures? It's a rough time. Let us know in the comments. For future updates on all your video game industry news, like this video and subscribe to The Know. We'll also try and tell you when people get new jobs, like, you know, new studios and stuff, because that's always, that's a happier time. And I'll say stuff like Bay. <laughs> My favorite is Gus, al <laughs> Gus always <laughs> says Bay. <laughs>